Uh, thank you, Senator Reed. Senator Rounds of South Dakota is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to both of you for, for being here with us today. Um, as you are both aware, in response to the development of the proposed international capital standard, Team USA proposed the aggregation method as an alternative framework. However, comments filed in response to a recent IAIS consultation on the proposed criteria to determine the comparability of, of AM and ICS, it indicates that the current process may very well be biased towards the ICS and will likely preclude a finding of comparability for AM, which, which we used or which we want. Could each of you just take a minute and explain why a Eurocentric capital model would have a negative impact on consumers' access to the U.S. insurance products. I'm assuming that both of you feel that that may be the case, and I, I would begin with uh, Commissioner Bahrain. Sure, thank you, Senator, for the, uh, for the question. So the U.S. market includes a number of foreign-owned insurers within, with U.S. businesses. So comparability com would allow a foreign jurisdiction uh, to defer to U.S capital requirements for that business. So it encourages that business. Um, additionally, as US-based insurers seek to operate abroad, it's important that those countries recognize uh, relevant aspects of our system. I'd also just point out that the covered agreements between the US and the EU and UK, along with our qualified jurisdiction process, already require recognition of US group capital. So the IAIS process should really not seek to con to contradict that recognition. Thank you. Director Seitz? No, it's, it's, and I'm, and I, I made the assumption, but I'm assuming that you're in agreement with my, with my statement that we really do want to maintain the current aggregated proposal that we use in the United States today. No, th thank you, Senator, for your question on this issue. It is one that is critically important for the U.S. insurance sector, and it's one that our team has been working on for the last several years in close coordination with the NAIC, the states, and the Federal Reserve. Um, we believe it's critical that we remain engaged in this conversation for many of the reasons that you noted. Um, in particular, the international community is moving ahead with the development of the insurance capital standard, and we need to be at the table to improve that methodology so that it's more compatible with our U.S. system. As we discussed earlier, you know, the, the ICS does not appropriately reflect certain aspects of our regime, particularly for those long-dated, long-duration products, which are critical for millions of Americans entering retirement. And I know that it'll be a priority issue for us over the coming months, and we look forward to working closely with the states, the NAIC, and the Fed as we take this important work forward. Thank you. you know, I, I really do believe that the U.S. system of state-based insurance regulation is truly the gold standard when it comes to protecting our insurance markets and the insurance consumers in my home state of South Dakota and across the country. Commissioner Bahrain, do you believe that our state-based regulatory system has been effective and successful? Uh, very much so. I, I think it was interesting, you know, as, as Senator Brown referred to AIG, and I think that for those of us that lived through that period of time and, you know, the, the crash of the capital markets in 2008, uh, what we know is that the one set of companies that did extremely well were the insurance companies, the PNC carriers that were regulated by the states. So as AIG sought to recover, it was those companies, those assets that they were able to sell in order to uh, fund that recovery. So the place where state regulation is in place, I think we've demonstrated over time, we talk about life insurance companies and we talk about the safety of life insurance companies. The insolvency of a life insurance company is almost unheard of. And the notion that policyholders in those rare instances where there have been an insolvency or not getting paid is also unheard of. So I think that what the uh, state-based regulatory system has proven over and over and over again, you know, having just come through a pandemic, having just come through a very difficult environment, having all of the things that are going on in our society right now, and yet the state insurance system is protecting policyholders, claims are being paid, and so I think that it is infinitely clear that the mechanisms that exist at the state-based level are able to protect policyholders and respond quickly and nimbly to changes in circumstances that warrant additional and adjustments in how we regulate. Well, Commissioner Bahrain, I, look, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And I really do believe that Congress should allow you 
and the NAIC to do your job. And, uh, and I think it's imperative that Congress recognize, recognizes that it has worked successfully and that when we start talking about the other items that are, that are critical and one of the items on it is private equity, there are some very good messages out there about what private equity has done for the insurance markets in the United States as well. My time has expired, but I, I thank you for being, I thank you both here for, for your uh, answers today. Thank you, Mr. Thanks, Chairman.